Hey everyone, welcome to the final video of Create a Parco System in Unity tutorial series. In this video, we'll implement this faulting action and we'll look at how we can perform different Parco actions based on the type of the obstacle. Alright, so let's start the video. So first, let's create the obstacle on which we can perform the vault action. So under the environment, I'll create a new cube. Okay, I'll name this one fence and let me double click on it to focus. Okay, so let me just place it somewhere around here and I'll change its X scale to something like 3 so that it's a bit more wider and I'll decrease the Z scale to 0.2. Okay. And I'll set the Y position to half of the Y scale. So half of one is 0.5. So now it's placed correctly on the ground. Okay. So next let's change its layer to obstacles so that our Paco controller can detect it. Okay. So now let's try to perform an action on this obstacle. So let me play the game. All right. And if I try to perform an action, as you can see that the player is performing the jump up action, right? So right now, our parkour controller only cares about the height of the obstacle. And since the height of this obstacle is one and the height range of jump up action is 0 0.8 to 1.5, it'll perform the jump up action. But for this obstacle, we don't want to perform the jump up action because after jumping on top of the obstacle, there is no space for the player to stand, right? So in cases like this, even if the height of the obstacles are same, we'll have to perform different actions based on the type of the obstacle, right? So we can't just depend on the height for selecting the parkour action. We also need some other way. So what we can do is we can also use the tag of the obstacle to decide the action. So I'll add a new tag for this obstacle. So I'll click over here and select add tag. And here I'll create a new tag called fence. Okay. And now we can assign that tag to our fence game object. So now this object has a tag fence and we can use this to decide what action should be played on this obstacle. Okay, so in the Paco action, we should also check for the tag of the obstacle. So first, I'll create a new variable called obstacle tag. Okay, and when we check if the action is possible, we also have to check the obstacle tag, right? So if the obstacle tag is not null, so to check if a string is not null, I'll use string dot is null or empty function. Okay. So what this will do is this will not only really check for null, but it will also check for an empty string, right? So even if the string is empty, then it will return true. All right. So in our case, we should check if it's not null or empty. So I'll add a not at the start. All right. So if the obstacle tag is given for this action and if the tag of the obstacle that we detected is not the same, then we should not perform that action. Right. So we can get the tag of the obstacle that we detected from hit data dot forward hit dot transform dot tag. So if the tag of the obstacle detected is not equal to our obstacle tag given for this action, then we can just return false and we should not run the action. Okay. So here we are checking the tag and 
will only run the action if the tag matches okay so let me also add a comment over here to make the code more clear all right so next let's go ahead and create an action that will be performed on an obstacle with tag fence okay so i'll create a new paco action and i'll call this vault fence okay so we don't have the animation for it yet we'll add that soon but first i'll set the obstacle tag as fence all right and for the min height i'll give something like 0.8 and for the max height i'll give 1.2 so note that the height range of this action overlaps with the jump up action but that won't be a problem because this action also checks for the tag of the obstacle all right so next for this action we also want to rotate towards the obstacle and we don't want any post action delay all right so next let's actually go ahead and import the animation for this action so to the animations folder i'll import a new animation called vault fence so again this is an animation that i downloaded from mixamo i'll attach this in the resource section of this lecture okay so first we need to make this animation humanoid so let me select copy from avatar and select the Elka archer as the avatar okay so now we can preview the animation by dragging the player into the preview window so yeah this is the animation so if you look at the start of the animation the player takes a step before performing the jump so we don't want that step so we can start from somewhere around frame 4 okay so let's start frame to 4 and next we don't want this action to have any rotation so i'll change the based upon to original and i'll check bake into pose all right and then for the root transform position y i'll change the based upon to feet this will prevent any floating issues with the feet okay so let me go ahead and hit apply so next i'll add this animation to our animator controller so let me just drag and drop it over here all right and i'll name this as vault fence and i'll make a transition back to the locomotion okay so now in the paco action for the animation name we can give vault fence okay so next we have to set the target matching for this animation so let's look at the animation and see how we can do target matching so for this animation we can actually match the left hand of the player right the left hand should be placed on the obstacle like this and it should be placed around 33 or 32 percentage of the animation right so the match target time will be 32 percentage and let's also find the start time so the player starts launching into the air around this point so we can use something like 12 percentage okay so in the action i'll change the match body part to left hand and the match start time will be 0 0.12 since it's 12 percentage and the match target time will be 0 0.32 that is 32 percentage okay and next for the match position weight i also want to match the z coordinate because the hand should be placed on the correct z position of the obstacle while performing the action all right so that's all we need to do in this action so let's go ahead and add it to our parkour controller so here i'll add a new action and i'll assign the vault fence action to it okay 
and next I'll place the wall fence action above the jump up action so this is important because the wall fence action and the jump up action works with the same height range right the only difference is wall fence action also checks for the tag of the obstacle so it should be placed above the jump up action because otherwise the parkour controller will perform the jump up action if the height of the obstacle matches right so if two actions have the same height range then the action that checks for the tag should be placed above the one without the tag okay so now let's go ahead and test the vaulting action okay so yeah you can see the action is working but we have a small problem the player stays on the air for some time before actually falling down to the ground so let me show it to you again okay so you can see that she is in the air for some time before falling to the ground so the reason for this is because while we perform the parkour action we are waiting for the length of the animation right but the thing is we might not perform the animation completely because before the animation completes we'll start transitioning to the next animation right so you can get a better idea of it by looking at the transition so this is a transition from vault fence to locomotion so here when the animation reaches this point we'll start transitioning to the locomotion animation right so the animator won't be playing the vault fence animation completely around this point it will start transitioning to the locomotion so we don't have to wait for the entire length of the animation you just have to wait till this point from which the transition happens right so if you wait for the entire length the problem is the character controller won't have control over the player while the transition is happening so during the transition gravity won't be applied on the player and the player won't fall down and stand in the air okay so this was not a problem for the other actions because for all the other actions the player was stepping on an obstacle right so it doesn't matter if the gravity is not applied on the player during the transition but for this action the player is stepping or the player is landing in the air right so in that case we should give back the control to the character controller and make the player fall during the transition so here in this while loop we should stop the loop when this animation starts transitioning to another animation so from here we can check if the animator is in transition by using animator dot is in transition function okay so here we also have to pass the layer index so i'll pass zero for it so if the animator is in transition and if the timer is greater than a small value like 0.5 then we should break out from this loop okay so why am i checking if the timer is greater than 0.5 the reason is because the animator will be in transition while we start playing the animation of our action right so when we say the animator to play the vault fence animation it won't go to the vault fence animation immediately right it will slowly transition from the locomotion to the vault fence so during that transition we should not break from the while loop right we should only break when the vault fence is transitioning back to the locomotion all right so adding a condition like this that checks if the timer is greater than a small value will make sure that we won't break the loop while we transition from locomotion to wall fence we'll only break it when we transition back to the locomotion okay so that's why we have this condition so let's go ahead and check how the action looks all right so yeah that looks much better right the player is not staying in the air right now when it's transitioning from the action to locomotion the player is actually 
falling down okay so that looks much better so after this change the character controller will have the control of the player during the transition of the animation so it'll apply gravity but it will also allow the player to move while the transition is happening so let's go ahead and test if that causes any issue in our current actions so first let's test the step up action so yeah there isn't an issue in the step up action the player movement looks pretty smooth while the transition is happening so next let's test the jump up action so yeah that also looks pretty smooth all right so moving the player during the transition looks okay for the step up and jump up action there is no sliding happening when we move so next let's test the climb up action okay so for this action it's not really smooth there's a little bit of sliding happening so we might have to wait for a little more time before we actually give the control back to the character controller okay so we can easily do that by increasing our post action delay a little so if i change this to 0.5 instead of 0.4 that should fix the issue and by the way if you want you can add post action delay to the other actions too if you feel like we should wait for some time before giving the control to the player okay so let's actually test the climb up action now and see if the sliding issue is fixed okay so now that's much better we can't move the player immediately we'll have to wait for some time so now there is no sliding all right so we have created a parkour system in which the player can perform different parkour actions dynamically based on the height and type of the obstacle so now we can just put this player in a better scene filled with obstacles and it should look like this so congrats on reaching this far and building the parkour system i hope you got lots of value and learned something new from the series if you want to expand this and create a climbing system that allows the player to climb on ledges then feel free to check out the full parkour and climbing system course on udemy and if you want a more advanced parkour system with features like predictive jumps, swinging on bars, balancing on narrow beams, etc., then be sure to check out our parkour and climbing system asset on Unity's asset store. Our team has spent more than 1000 hours to build it, so I hope you'll find it useful. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in future videos.